Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Let's solve this particular problem. In this problem, we are required to determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. And it is said that sketch this vector on the coordinate system, right? So we have to find the resultant of this F1 and F2. And then we have to find the coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. And then we have to draw that vector in this coordinate system that is in 3D space, right? So first, uh, what I will do is that I will find the Cartesian vector representation of F1 and F2. So F1 will be F1 vector will be equal to F1x. As we all know, this will be F1xi plus F1yj plus F1zk, right? So we have to find F1x, F1y, and F F1z. We have to find the components of this F1 along x, y, and z axes, right? So as we can see that the F1 magnitude is 80 pounds, right? So it, uh, if we resolve this F1 into its component, so it will have one component which will be, this component will be lying in the XY plane, right? And let's say that this is, this component is F1 dash, right? So if we consider this light blue triangle, so the angle is made with this F1 dash, so it is the cost component. So we can write that F1 dash is 80 cos of, 30 degrees and similarly I can draw one another component like this right so this component is parallel to this z axis is then this is the fz component right so this fz component is the sine component I can write that f we can write that this is f1z right so this is f1z so I can write that f1z is 80 sine of 30 degrees right and similarly we can write that f1 dash is 80 cos of 30 let me write it here f1 dash is 80 cos of 30 degrees right and now if i draw two more components if we resolve this f dash into its component so it will have one component which will be acting like this right and it will have one component which will be acting in this direction right so as we can see that this is the component of this F1 dash in the X direction and F1 dash is the component of F1. So we can write that this is F1 X and this is F1 Y component, right? So now if we consider this uh, dark blue triangle, which is lying in the X, Y plane. So F1 X is, we can write directly here that F1 X is the cost component. We can write that this is F dash cos of 40 degrees right and similarly f1 y is f dash sine of 40 degrees right so i can write here as f1 vector so f1 x is f dash cos of 40 right so let me write it here so f1 x is f dash cos of 40 and f dash is this thing right so this means that f1 x is 80 cos of 30 degrees cos of 40 degrees right so i will write it here this is 80 cos of 30 degrees cos of 40 degrees along the positive i this is acting in the positive i direction then the positive x direction right similarly uh, this f1 y is acting in the negative direction so i have to put minus sign here right and again f1 y is f dash sine of 40 and f dash is 80 cos of 30 so i will write that this is 80 cos of 30 this is f dash and sine of 40 right so this is sine of 40 this is j this whole is f y component right and f1 z component is 80 sine of 30 and it is acting in the positive z direction so i will write plus so this is 80 sine of 30 degrees right so now we can find these components of f1 so f f1 x is 80 cos of 30 cos of 40 so this is 53.07 so i can write that this is 53.07 i minus 80 cos of 30 sine of 40 so this is 44.53 44.53 j and similarly plus 80 sine of 30 80 sine of 30 
So, this is 40 and this is 40 k right. So, this is f 1 vector. Similarly, if I, if I if we represent this f 2 vector, so f 2 vector is acting in only in the negative z direction. So, we can write directly f 2 Cartesian vector representation. So, it it has no component in the x direction. So, that is 0 i plus 0 j since it is only acting in the, in the negative z direction. So, you will write minus and its magnitude is 130 and k. So, it is acting in the negative k direction, right. So, this is the Cartesian vector representation of f 2. So, we need to find the resultant of both of these. So, the resultant of both of these will be the summation of all the components of f 1 and f 2. So, we have to add both of these components, right. So, 53.07 plus 0. So, this is 53.07 i. This is the R x component of the resultant. We can write that this is the R x. If we add both of these, so this is minus 44.53 j and if we uh, add both of these, so this is minus 130 plus 40. So, this will be minus 90 k. Right. So, this is the resultant of f 1 and f 2. So, so, if you want to find the magnitude of the resultant, so the magnitude of the resultant will be equal to r x square plus r y square plus r z square and we will take the square root. Then r x is known which is let me do it directly in calculator right. So, r x is uh, 53.07 square uh, plus this is minus 44.53 square and this is plus minus 90 squared. So, this is 113.58 right. So, the resultant magnitude is 113.58 pounds right. This is the resultant magnitude and further it is said that find the coordinate direction angles. So, we have to find the angles of the resultant with the positive x, y and z axis that is alpha, beta and gamma angles right. So, as we know that cos of alpha will be equal to that will be equal to r x component of the resultant magnitude divided by the r magnitude right. So, from this we can write that alpha will be equal to cos inverse r x magnitude is 53.07 is 53.07 divided by r magnitude which is 113.58. So, this will give us alpha. Similarly, if I write beta, so then cos of beta that will be r y divided by r magnitude. So, beta will be equal to cos inverse and r y. So, r y is minus 44.53 divided by the r magnitude which is 113.58 and similarly, we can find gamma as well right. So, gamma will be cos of gamma will be equal to r z divided by r magnitude then gamma will be equal to cos inverse and r z. So, r z is minus 90. So, I will write minus 90 and divided by 113.58 right. So, we can find alpha. So, share cos inverse this is 53.07 uh, divided by 113.58. This is 62. We can approximately say that alpha is 62 degrees. Similarly, we can find beta using this. So, this is minus 44.53. So, this is 113 approximately 113 we can write that beta is approximately 113 degrees and similarly we can find gamma using this ratio this is minus 90 so gamma is 142 right so 100 gamma is 142 approximately right so this is alpha beta and gamma angles so, now uh, we need to sketch that uh, resultant vector right. So, let me sketch it. So, 
So now let's say that this is my positive x direction, this is my positive y direction, this is my positive z direction. So now as we can see that the resultant a have is having one component in the positive x direction, right? This is positive. So we have to draw that component. So our x is 53. So let's say that this is 53, right? Then it is having one component uh, in the negative y direction, which is minus uh, 44.53. So let's say that this is the component of the result which is acting along the negative y direction. I can place it here as well. And similarly, it is having one component which is acting in the negative z direction, right? So the magnitude is 90, right? So let's say that this is the component of the result which is acting in the negative y direction. So I can place it here, right? So the resultant will be from the uh, tail of our x to the head of our z, right? So, this is the resultant. So, and the this resultant r is making alpha angle, this alpha angle 62 degrees with the positive x axis, is, right? So, let me represent that angle as well. So, this angle is alpha, right? And this angle is beta or we can say that uh, this angle is beta, right? This angle is beta. Beta is more than 100, right? So, this is 113 and it is also making some angle with the z-axis, right? So, the, with, with the z-axis, it is making 142 degrees, right? So, this is gamma. Now, in 264 problem, it is said that specify the coordinate direction angles of f1 and f2 and express each force as a cartesian vector right so we have already represented f1 and f2 as a cartesian vector these are the cartesian vector representation of f1 and f2 so now to solve this problem we only need to solve for coordinate direction angles right so now i will solve this problem right so i so i will continue this 263 problem for this 264 right so we have already found this f1 and f2 so now to find the coordinate direction angles for f1 so let's say that uh, for f1 let's say that we can write that the angle of f1 with the positive x axis is let's say alpha 1 right so we can write that cos of alpha 1 let me represent that angles as well right so let's say that this f1 is making alpha 1 angle with the positive x axis let's say that this angle is alpha 1 and f1 is making alpha uh, beta 1 angle right so this is beta 1 this is alpha 1 this is beta 1 and it is also making gamma 1 angle with the z axis right so we have to find this alpha 1 beta 1 and gamma 1 angles for f1 right so cos of alpha 1 will be equal to f1 x divided by f magnitude so f1 magnitude is known which is 80 right so cos of alpha 1 is f1x which is uh, 53.07 divided by 80 and if we take cos inverse so we can find that alpha 1 so alpha 1 is cos inverse this ratio so cos inverse uh, 53.07 divided by 80 so this is 48.44 right so alpha 1 is 48.44 degrees similarly cos of beta 1 is equal to f 1 y divided by f 1 magnitude so beta 1 is equal to cos inverse and f 1 y so this is f 1 y this is minus 44.53 divided by 80 so this will give us beta 1 So, this is 123.82. So, beta 1 is 123.82 degrees. And similarly, cos of gamma 1 is equal to F1z divided by F1 magnitude. And similarly, gamma 1 is cos inverse. And F1z is 40, right? So, we will write 40 divided by 80. So, gamma 1 equals to so 40 divided by 80 is 0.5 right so we will write 0.5 so this is 60 degrees so gamma 1 is 60 degrees 
right so alpha 1 beta 1 and gamma 1 are the coordinate direction angles of f1 so this was required in this problem right and now we, we also need to find the alpha 1 beta 1 and gamma 1 angles for f2 as well right so again we will use these same formulas right but for f2 we will find we will represent alpha 2 beta 2 and gamma 2 right so let's say that for f2 cos of alpha 2 will again will be equal to f2 x divided by f2 magnitude so f2 we can write alpha 2 as f2 x so f2 x is 0 we will write cos inverse 0 divided by f2 magnitude so f2 magnitude is 130 this is given right so we will divide it by 130 so 0 divided by 130 is 0 so this will give us 90 right so we can find cos inverse 0 divided by 130 so this is 90 right so alpha 2 is 90 degrees there is no need to calculate this right we can we can see it right that that f2 is making 90 degrees with the x-axis f2 is making 90 degrees with the y-axis so from from here we can visualize that uh, beta 2 is also 90 degrees right this f2 is also making 90 degrees with the y-axis right and similarly if you want to find uh, gamma 2 so then cos of gamma 2 will be equal to so cos of gamma 2 will be f2 z divided by f2 and gamma 2 will be f2 z is this is minus 130 so i will write cos inverse minus 130 divided by 130 the magnitude is 130 so this is minus 1 so cos of minus 1 will be 180 right so this means that we can write here that gamma 2 is 180 degrees and we can we can see it we can visualize it that f2 is making 180 degrees with the positive z axis is right so this gamma 2 is 180 degrees right so the coordinate direction angles of f1 is this 48.44 beta is 123.82 and alpha gamma 1 is 60 and for force f2 alpha 2 is 90 beta 2 is 90 and gamma 2 is 180 degrees right so this is the solution of these two problems